Welcome back everyone to the European Ultimate Championships. We are live here from the beautiful University of Limerick for more bracket play action and we advance into the Open Division quarterfinals for you now. We have the upstarts, one of the surprise packages of this tournament, Spain, taking on the young stars, the big names of Belgium and even bigger names in the booth for you than on the field. It's Benji recently, Burgess. We're back. Really excited for this game. Belgium, of course, tipped as one of the favourites coming into this tournament. And Spain really made a name for themselves, chatting to the coaches before this game. They're happy to even be in the quarterfinal. They feel like they've done their job. Pressure is off their shoulders. It's a bit of a free hit for them because mm. I think a lot of this week for them is, yes, they're known as a brilliant beach nation, but they want to prove that they are more than just a beach country that they can hang with the best of them out here on grass. And I mean, they proved that right from the first day with that big universe point upset of Italy. Oh yeah, they've, they've beaten some good teams. Getting to the quarterfinals of such a stacked tournament is incredibly impressive. I mean, you don't make it to the quarterfinals by luck alone. You have to be good. No. And I mean, they played this morning in that streamed pre-quarter match against Austria. And they, I think, fully deserve their spot here. Oh, and yeah. there was even a cheeky little Callahan in there as well mm. for Paul Kolbos, I think. They will bring energy, they will bring that quick disc movement, and they will be a whole heap of fun to watch against the Belgian side that is, uh, I think, quickly nailing a place down as a fan favourite. Yeah, we made a video on the Hive Ultimate YouTube channel earlier this week about Spain's quick disc movement. Belgium will be looking to shut that down. Of course, they've got plenty of players on their side that can move the disc quickly themselves. We even asked uh, Toby de Cran on Limerick Late Live, Live last night about some of the travel calls he's been um, made on him in previous tournaments. Yeah, Felix was waxing lyrical about that give-go that... Uh, uh, how did Toby describe it? It's a bit like he feels like he shouldn't be allowed to do it, but it is within the rules. Like it feels yeah. like a loophole, I think he said. Well, it is. But of course, the trick is you have to make it look like you're not traveling. Which That's the thing. A lot of the time, it's not just about not traveling. It's yeah. about making it very obvious that you're not traveling. That's the skill. Is an extra skill to add into it. And of course, we've analyzed Spain a little bit as well on Limerick Late Night Live, presented mm. by Eurodisc. And you can watch all of those back at your leisure this week, our daily recap of all the hot gossip, inside stories, and breaking news. And of course, Limerick Late Night Live will be back again tonight mm. at nine. So we'll see you there, live from a studio, which is definitely not our front room. Yeah, definitely a studio that we uh, got I them to build specially for us. Yeah, we've got proper, you mm. know, like audio padding and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Belgium are gonna begin the game on defense, wearing the red with the black shorts. It's the all navy for Spain. And we are underway here in the open quarterfinal. And that is a frankly hideous ball. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all. If it landed in, it would have been an absolute nightmare. The wind just pushed it out of the far sideline. And Spain, I think gratefully, will take it from the brick mark. Good luck fielding that. Yeah, Spain won the toss and chose to start on offense. And Belgium sensibly took the upwind end zone. So Belgium v Spain, what have you got for us? That is not how Spain would have wanted to start through the hands of San Jose. Gertan Vandenbroek, underneath Uczynski. There is a real pace about the play and they're trying to give Dan de Marais the chance to do Dan de Marais things, but even he's not getting that. Hockey just with too much on it. Yeah, trying to make Trying to get another highlight clip for Demaray there, but the wind pushing the disc down, sailing it past Demaray. So slightly weird start to the game. One turnover apiece. Corbus picks up, and Spain their first completion to Monterde. Such a key cog for them. Swinging around to Romano, who was himself a previous Limerick late night live guest. 
must have won the stats leaders for the team. He is indeed, and we'll delve into that a little bit later. Juan Troiano. Underneath to Romano. Wants the around. Monterde. Spain just looking to move the disc quickly. Lost his footing a little bit with people in the way, and I think Belgium were cognizant of the fact that, you know, just trying to avoid contact there, so not calling the travel. And what a layout block by Bontom! He just came out of nowhere! Jesus! This Who is... saw that coming? Not Spain. Back in play. Muller. To Bontom. Can he get the bookends? He will throw the assist. And it is a Belgian break. Nicolas de Messmaker gives the Belgians a 1-0 lead. But it's all about that Bon Ton block, baby. That was ridiculous. Well, they weren't able to get the highlight clip for Demaray earlier, but they certainly get one for Bon Ton. Perhaps baits that throw a little bit. And then comes flying through for the block. Not in my house. That's what he said. Bon Ton really broke out for me at the European Indoor Championships in December in Lithuania when Belgium won gold in the open division. A key cog off their D-line and he's a capable he's capable of getting the blocks, catching the goals, or throwing the assists as well with a bit of toe drag swag from the mess maker to boot. Strong start from the Belgians, just what we expected. Of course, Spain have to be feeling a bit nervous coming into this game. Belgium are such a strong team. They've had a lot of attention from various pundits, including us. Yep, both on LTTV and as your work as part of the Hive. And for good reason. Some world-class players on this team. They are a lot of fun to watch. As feels like a bit of a Murphy's Law game at the moment. For Spain, everything that can go wrong is going wrong. Big man Lander de Crane. A stoppage downfield, I think, for a pick. De Crane, looking like something straight out of the 80s with that haircut and moustache, even though he was comfortably not even born by then. I think he wasn't even born in the 90s. And another pick, some offensive spacing issues, it seems, for the Belgians. But I can check in. Now swung just past the bidding defender, but he definitely broke the concentration of Brecht Haymans. Spain shooting deep with Romano. Monterde, can he track it towards the side of the end zone? He went full throttle for it. Admire the resolve, even if he came up empty. Yeah, not sure that disc was ever in a catchable position. But Spain have to get themselves back in this game somehow. And if banging it deep, and making big plays. There's certainly one way to do it. Underneath to Derek. He's more than capable of putting up the shot. He looked a little bit glum as he released it. As Paul Kovos is very unhappy with the contact. Benjamin Watts came right over the top of two. Spanish players there, Itamendi and Cobos. We went up very early. Cobos has to come off injured. So Watts does not have control of that as he's coming down. By that I mean himself. So Itamendi's calling the foul, presumably because he got jumped on top of. The question is whether or not he would have been able to make the play anyway. The disc was a long way over both of their heads. So 
So players in the field still discussing it. Yeah, a couple of players came to check our replay monitor as well. Have a look at it again, make your own minds up. It's been a while. Avala Itamendi, who we often see wreaking havoc in the end zone as he did at Beach Euros back in October in Portimao, playing his ultimate with deep space again this season, I believe, in the mixed division, based in London, of course. I think at this point we might uh, see what the result. Well, they have actually come to a resolution, a protracted discussion, and I was expecting it to be contested, but mm. foul call retracted, so we'll stay here with Haymans. Perhaps someone managed to talk Itamendi into accepting that the disc was too high. He was never realistically going to be able to make a play on it despite the contact. Haymans ground checks us to bring us back in. Pops off to Dimare and Romano quickly accepts that Dimare got there first. Dorit comes underneath. Quickly gets off the line. Dimare just puts the air underneath it. Plenty of time for Dickrain. And whoa, that was not it. Fernando de Crane, and you could see it written on his face when he released it. Not, not even sure what he was going for with that throw. The edge was completely wrong. I'll be honest, I'm not sure I am either. You give your shooters license to shoot, and Fernando de Crane is absolutely that. Calls to surround the stack from Belgium. Something we saw from the under-24 side as well. And Troyano, looking big early, sees the soft spot and finds Monterde. Now Diaz. And there is that quick give-go movement. Run the gauntlet down towards the brick mark. Romano. Itamendi points. They're trying to get it at the front of the end zone. Not that time. Benjamin Swartz gets the block. As soon as Belgium could put a throttle on that flow, Spain looked a little short of ideas. Going to be a layout required, maybe no. Speed across to chase it down from Varek, and now Derrick on the sideline. Going for the blade to the back of the end zone, where the knee sliding snag is made by that man, Dimare, and the brake train keeps on rolling 2-0. Well, Spain looked so good for a few moments at that point. But as soon as that flow stopped and Belgium got to reset their defense, they get the block. Here's a look at the shot again from Derrick. Just gets the edge to take it away from the defender. Never had any doubt that Dan de Marais would come up with the reception. And with Spain's offense having turned it over five times on their first two points, understandably, they take the timeout.
We, we are, are a group, group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. 2-0 Belgium here in the open quarterfinal and both of them breaks to boot as well. The way the bracket shakes out, the winner of this game plays the winner of Belgium and the Czech of Belgium, we are Belgium, <laughs> of Germany and the Czech Republic, which is currently tied at two. On the other half of the bracket, GB leads Switzerland 3-2, while France, Italy is tied at once. And that actually that France versus Italy game, you can watch. It's on our other streaming field here on Ulti TV. Two fields for you all week, you lucky, lucky people. Free of charge, of course, and for as little as a pint of stereotypical Irish stout a month, mm. you can help grow the spread of free live ultimate. Patreon.com slash Ulti TV, the place to be. Good pull. Very good pull. Rolls out the back, but enough time for the Belgian defense to get set into position. It's the main advantage of pulls that land deep and roll out the side is it takes a while to field it, so the defense will get down and set, and as we can see, they are surrounding the Spain vertical stack once again. Troiano clears through. And Bontomp again with another block, picking the pocket of the Spaniards. Hockey. Finds that soft spot in the middle, and Demesmaker into the end zone, and the Belgians are on fire right now. I mean, they were favourites coming into this, but this is something. Spain have absolutely no answer for Belgium surrounding their stack. They did better the first time on that previous point, where they managed to find a soft spot on the far side of the field, but this time, trying to play it short, I mean, it's an excellent game plan from the Belgians. On top again, getting the block, and then they just find their way through. And the mess maker finds Matthew Muller. Three nil Belgium now. And if Spain cannot find way to have that counter punch to this Belgian defense, they could be out of sight before they know it. Well, we saw a few moments of brilliance for them from them in the last point where they got that quick this movement going before Romano stood still with the disc for a bit too long. I think the key for them to get some kind of footing in this game is going to be to avoid static positions as much as possible, which could involve doing some funky milling around as the disc is being brought in just to not allow Belgium to set up any kind of defensive set. This time they attack the pull. That's what we like to see. And that's much better. They can try and get things going a bit quickly before the Belgian defense can get set. But they do apply the brakes. Gonzalez. Not really seeing a lot of separation, but does find Monteverde. Puts a lot underneath that around. Way back to Miguel Jimenez. And he's going to shoot deep. The pick is called. Retracted. And, uh, retracted, deciding that it did not have any effect there. So Spain finally find their way onto the board, but they still trail 3-1. Well, wow, what a creative deep shot. Don't think anyone in Belgium really expected that to come up because the force was forehand, the cut was on the open side going deep and it was an IO throw. Maybe we can take another look at it here. There's that deep reset pass, which actually opened up the space for this inside shot. Typically we see deep shots with roll curve edge on them. In this case that would have been going out to the right and fading back in left, but this time went for the inside out shot, keeping the disc on the left and having it fade in right towards the receiver, which means the defender was always on the wrong side of it. 
So nicely done from Spain. They attacked the pull on that point, but still set up that vertical stack, which Belgium surrounded. But because they didn't have as much time to look at where all the players were, Spain got to get the disc moving uh, a little bit sooner, and it worked out for them nicely. So somewhat belatedly, nearly 20 minutes into this contest, we're seeing the Belgian O-line for the first time. Sometimes when your D-line gets on that string of breaks early, by the time the offense comes onto the field, they can be a little bit colder. That one, I mean, almost cut Bakeman's in half. That is an unfortunate foul call. The stall was at eight when it was called. I will, think, I will say that, and I can hear this because they're right close to us, hmm. but like a slightly fast eight. I've heard faster. I mean, yes, but that doesn't... Um, <laughs> it's all relative, I guess. Foul contest, I think. So, Stoll should come back in on six, I believe. Maximum six for a call such as this. You are a qualified game advisor, so you should know. It was a qualified game advisor. Although, yes, the rules have changed it's since been then. been a while. <laughs> but all the players have to get a rule certification before this event, and I'm sure they will probably have another one. <laughs> Whoa, what a shot that is. Got everyone, it seems, off guard. Now De Moulinaire. Trying to find an option. Spain's defense gumming things up downfield. A pick halts proceedings. Might stay here, though, with Aaron van der Wijk. What even was that throw off the restart? How how was he free? Vision, mate. Just good field vision. Yeah, sometimes the stoppage allows you to look around and see stuff like that. One of the things I was told, I'll come back to this, is uh, Aaron van der Wey goes around to his brother Arthur, and Arthur van der Wey go with the scuba to the back of the end zone for the score. A clean hold for Belgium into the hands of the waiting recipient. Jonas De Wehler. Well, I feel like Belgium got a tiny bit lucky that point. Spain's defense was extremely good on this near sideline. <laughs> I mean, that's just a beauty, isn't it? He sees the space, but the execution is set up here by the pivot. He gets out, not just laterally, but in front, and it creates that window. The thing I was going to say I was told is that someone once told me so often when you set up, everyone runs everywhere and you can find that actually by kind of doing nothing and mm. just standing there, you just find yourself in a soft spot to be free. I mean, this is something we, we coach at Hive Ultimate. One of the lesser known principles of, of hex offense is don't move too much. But the, the throw through the defense like that, it was just a bit rude. So Spain back out on offense here. On third day. Breaking low. Back to Troiano. And Troiano can only find Dan de Marais. And he had Van den Broek for, cover for company in the deep space as well. Demaray was actually marking Romano coming under. He was wide open, but the throw went straight to him. Yeah, almost seemed to lock in new what Troiano was looking for. Demaray has it back in his hands now. Faking the big shot and going with the flick. It's going to blade away from Uczynski. And Uczynski, he tried to milk it into the end zone. There is not just open yet, but he can pop it into Bontom for another Belgian break 5-1. Well, Belgium just have Spain's number. So locked in on defense. Really intelligent. Help defense from Demare to get the block. And they are all over their opposition right now. There's the shot from Demare. Maybe it doesn't come out quite as flatly as he would like, but the separation for Ruczynski decides that he can't quite take the risk of milking it anymore, but knows that he has back up in Bon Tom for 5-1. Belgium have been brilliant so far. Yeah, they're playing with so much swag and confidence. 
as you would expect from a team that is in such good form. They only have one loss all tournament. Yeah, that sudden death defeat to Great Britain earlier in the mm. week. But they were 8-3 down at half, so to even take it to Universe there, I think says a lot about this Belgian side. Building the ball from the floor. Burgling some free yards before the Belgians can get set. Ramos. Uh, that is suspiciously open there. Oscar Gonzalez. And there is indeed a pick. Yeah, rounded the front of the stack a little bit. A bit too closely. Oof, close bid. Close but no cigar. Spain trying to cram it down that fourth side, another pick. Been a fair few of those this contest. Yeah, Spain cutting a little bit too close to each other. They know that the margins are going to be fine against this Belgian defense, but need to give each other a little bit more space in this. Again, another bid from Van der Roos that doesn't get there. Still can't getting high. They get the pass off and then they try and just dink and dunk their way to get movement coming again. But it is asphyxiating downfield from Belgium. And that is Landa de Crane's to claim. Another break chance then for Belgium. Oh dear. However, that's not the way to use it. And almost, I think, picking up quickly from the turn suits the Spanish offense because it doesn't give the Belgian defense a chance to get into position. And that time, they capitalize on their second life, two to five. Yeah, good. Cut into the end zone from Sergio Diaz. But what was that throw from Belgium? Just went way too far. Have another look. I think you do see this sometimes from younger sides especially that they will still have errors in them and that one I think maybe just didn't account for the win because it's not as strong as it has been really this weekend but it is still there it is still something that you have to take into account and the too much of the underside was shown to the wind there. Good, Good technique from Perez to immediately catch the block and then pass it off get the immediate return pass and then nice little lead pass into the end zone for the score as well. So a good give-go technique as you would expect from the Spanish side. So here's the pull. It's a high one. Again, going for the blading backhand. Not fielded particularly cleanly, actually, by Belgium. And in the end, hmm. I think they decided that Arthur van der Wey didn't want any part of it. And Spain coming with some zone, looking like a 3-3-1 set up here, Lou. Indeed. Three players at the front trying to make the disc go sideways. Three players in the back stopping any pops through and one player trying to stop the deep shots but not able to get into that one. The Whaler. To Yonkers. Can't squeeze the one through to De Moulinier. Bit of throw and go! No! Foul on the throw. I think this is going to go back to Aaron van der Wey. Excellent read of the play from Walter Lopez. He did brilliantly to get the block. It's a shame from a Spanish perspective that it won't stand. Xavier de Cran lurking in the deep space. I think he's just trying to hope, see if he can just kind of sneak through unnoticed there, through the back door. 
you could tell he was suggesting that I want to wind up for this deep shot. Give me something to hit. The players on the sideline shouting left, left at the deep player in Spanish, of course. See? Ben Yonkers displaying the arsenal of throws he could have, and again, the exaggerated, exacerbated wind up from Arthur van der Wege. Just moves defenders around. Now some jailbreak from Belgium. Beekmans. Goes back. Aaron van der Wege. That's Jonas Duela on this far side. And now Belgium just going to be a little bit slower with things. Take their time. Pick the precise passes. Jonkers rips it through the center. De Weyler back to Aaron van der Weyck. Almost a hush around the pitch. It's Belgium just slowly and precisely find the space. They're in no rush. Don't need to be. As just the faking, players looked to Toby De Crane at the back. And a relatively rudimentary goal there for PJ de Muller now. Even though Belgium weren't rushing or, or playing aggressively against that zone, you, you just could you could see it in the body language. They were 100% confident in their ability to march this disc down the pitch and score. They all look so comfortable out there. And rightly so, 6-2 up. So in the other quarterfinals, the winner of this game, of course, faced the winner of Germany and the Czech Republic. Germany leading 5-4 there. And on the other side of the bracket, Great Britain with a 7-4 lead over Switzerland. The winner of that game faced the winner of France and Italy on the other streaming field, where Italy are up 4-3. So as things stand, on for a Belgium-Germany semi-final tomorrow morning. What a mouth-watering contest that would be. But of course, I'm sure that Spain and the Czech Republic would have something to say about it. Bontomp going with the spin pull again. That backhand blade, difficult to field. Bounces in the long barrier to get behind it. First pass to Troiano. Now with Ruben San Jose. The upline goes to Troiano. Didn't see any option unveiling though, as he caught. And going with the scuba to sit it into a little bit of breakside space. Marquez, lovely lead through there. Troiano looks downfield, puts the air underneath it. And Alvaro Itarendi scores goals. It's just what he does. Well, fantastic offense from Spain. They look like they were milling about and a bit disorganized downfield, but they make it work. Some very intelligent throws to spaces that players were just about to attack into. Always seem to be just ever so slightly ahead of the Belgians on each throw. And a good bailout scuba as well when the stall was getting high. But really intelligent deep cut from Uthamendi. I think the Belgian defenders were a little bit too preoccupied with stopping the unders. As we see co-commentator Charlotte Terrasson. Yeah, engaged in discussion there on the sideline with Cornel Descan. He's got that rather bulky brace on his left knee. So Belgium's O-line getting ready to go back out there. Just noticed that Charlotte has cleats on. Wonder if uh, she wants Belgium to sub her in. I don't think she's rostered. No, I don't think she is. Or Belgium. That, that neither. Ooh. First pass to Arta van der Weyge from his brother. 
Bain trying to stick with this 3-3-1. Did seem to slow Belgium down and Ben Yonkers nearly loses his footing. His brother ref of, ref of course unfortunately tore his ACL at Windmill so not able to play this week. This is the same fate unfortunately that befell Christoph Phillips. Goes back after Van der Weg. Belgium just looking calm and assured at the moment in possession. So De Fein squeezes one down the line there. Van der Weg goes back to De Crane, a gentle connection there. And another one, the younger of the two, Arta van der Weger. I think he's the younger one. Oh, he's the older one, so that's what I know. We also know that there's a third one out there somewhere. I'm pretty sure. Trying to shoot down the sideline. Oh, I thought the defender was going to get a bit on it, but it was zipped so quickly that he didn't get a chance. And another goal to the tally of PJ de Moulinaire. Well, I like that Spain came down with that zone again. I thought it had some potential, but at this point, Belgium clearly demonstrate that they can work through it, no problem. A lot more comfortable that time of asking. Just going back to that slip from Ben Yonkers. We literally tagged him in a story on Instagram last night on the Hive Ultimate Instagram account, saying, please don't pivot like this again. And another slightly scary looking um, pivot where he slipped and is needed something funny. That's yeah. the last thing we need, at, or Belgium need especially, is another. So he's been warned. He's injured. He's, he's been warned. Belgium's O line has still not turned it over in their last two possessions. That one was 23 passes and the prior 29. So it has definitely slowed them down, mm. but it hasn't turned them yet. He looks so comfortable completing that number of passes. The zone is not putting on as much pressure as it as it needs to to make yeah, these in plays the past, I think that was one of the blueprints to beat the Belgians was slow them down and kind of eventually kind of wear their patience down. But it's a much more mature side to their game now. Past the bidding, Lander de Crane picks himself up. Spain looking to take on the break. One number 12 gets in front of the other. San Jose. Now, the Damo. Here's Romano. Troiano comes back into the backfield to collect the push pass and immediately bounces it back to Romano. Two of them just playing with each other for a bit. Now Monterde wants a piece. Belgium try to apply the brakes, but Spain moving it well. Certainly they feel like they've got a bit more confidence offensively. Offhand from Itamendi. Still Spain advance down the field. And again, that just short area quickness, the timing on point. Beautiful offense from the Spaniards. And Francisco Romano catches the goal 7-4. Belgium were hungry for that block. You saw multiple players bidding or looking like they're about to bid on throws they knew they were, were coming but Spain just ever so slightly ahead on every single throw once again and all those throws very short accelerating out of them finding passes in small spaces exactly what we expected to see from the Spanish side it again not a lot of room to work with but especially in the red zone you don't really need a lot of room timeout called on the field Belgium still in control of this one with a 7-4 lead
We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. Seven for Belgium lead, looking for a hold to take us into half. And given that the Belgian O-line has not turned it over yet, you'd have to say that they're favourites to do so. They're looking fantastic offensively this game. Spain have tried a few different looks. Their match defence didn't really put too much pressure on the Belgians at the start of the game and neither did the zone in the last few points. So. Yeah, Belgium absolutely favourites to take this. We'll see if the timeout has created some devious plan for Spain or whether it's just a case of kind of taking a bit of air out of Belgian sails. I'd like to see them go back to match defence for this one. Just run hard, try and put lots of pressure on. They almost generated a, a stall out earlier when they just got trapped on the sideline. See if they can make something like that happen again. Arta van der Weg, Sven Jonkers, and it looks like more zone. Slightly different zone though. They have more of a four player diamond behind the front three. Uh, is someone gonna mark Toby de Crane deep? Uh, I don't think they are. Nope. As the deep shot goes up, they're gonna try and close the gap. De Crane's gonna get position, and de Crane rips it away from Santiago Ramos. And that will give Belgium a clean hold into half. 8-4 the score. Well, I suppose that's what happens when you don't like the crane tightly. And he's just, you know, one of the best receivers in Europe at the moment. Probably happen even if you did mark him tightly. <laughs> I mean, it might well have done because, to be, fair to, to be fair to Ramos, he did close the gap well. Jonas Duela put the throw probably closer to that far sideline than I would have liked. Yeah, the throw could have been better. The grain had to make a play. It, I think it's just one of those where if you just put it kind of generally somewhere within the same postcode as Toby de Crane, he'll come down with it. As he did there. 8-4, Belgian looking good for a semi-final berth. Here, open quarter-final action live from EUC 2023. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. We live in a world where everything can be referenced online. Imagine if the greatest moments in our sport were never filmed. Eurodisc continues to do what it takes to make free-to-watch live streams a reality. Let's leave nothing to the imagination. We'll consume the action live. And we'll support those that helped to make it happen. If it wasn't streamed, it didn't happen. Eurodisc.
8-4 Belgium lead here. Half time in this open quarter final from EUC 2023. There you are, four breaks to none, half the number of turns, and Spain have not even generated a break chance, whereas Belgium have hit on 50% of theirs. From an offensive perspective, after some early miscues, about as clinical as they come, Lou. Yeah, Belgium looking phenomenal on offense. I must say, though, it's good to see Spain punching in their offensive points. They've had two clean holds in, in a row on their last two attempts. Right. They did start this game looking a little bit shaken, perhaps in their own heads a bit about the caliber of opponent they were playing. They settled into it now for sure, gotten over that initial fear and are playing much better with the disc in their hands. They, unfortunately, the way Belgium have been playing, they might have already given themselves too much to do. The winner of this game plays the winner of Germany and the Czech Republic, and that one is at Galaxy Point right now, seven apiece. On the other side of the bracket, Great Britain up 9-5 on Switzerland, and Italy up 7-5 on France, so maybe a bit of an upset there. Harvid Zoloskis is lurking in the booth, and he seemed a little bit shocked. I think he knows which way he expects it to go, so evidently Faith played in his moon catch as teammates there. Yeah, not surprised to see him on the sideline watching this one. If you haven't watched that Latvia versus Ireland mixed quarterfinal, that is well worth going back and watching. One of a number of bangers that we've had this week here on Ulti TV. And the best part is they're all free to watch live mm. and in perpetuity. If you want to help support that, like, subscribe, you know all the calls to action at this point. Help us advance closer and closer to that 20,000 subscriber mark. And of course, patreon.com slash TV to pledge your financial support. We would greatly appreciate your help in growing free live ultimate for the people. Belgium, about to begin the second half, receiving as well, as if to compound the woes for Spain. Well, Spain did choose to start the game on offense, which is the correct decision, especially when the conditions are not that blustery. I mean, I fully agree with you. It just sucks to have the other team receive out of half when you're a few points down. But that is the risk you take. Toby the Crane's on the floor. It's like his foot got trodden on or something. Yeah, he's got a fair amount of uh, Kinesio tape some on the back of his neck and there's some down that left leg as well of the gentle standout and his game is anything but very physical match up there between Monterde and Demaray. Spain coming out in match defense to start the second half maybe try and disrupt any rhythm Belgium had against that zone Beekman takes off deep he's not the option It's Aaron van der Wege instead. Taking the swing around to his brother Arthur. Two of them just playing catch in the backfield like it's their own back garden at the moment. There's the break to Demare. De Crane gets the continuation, but there was a pick before the throw. Didn't affect that completion necessarily, except the offensive spacing perhaps. Well, there's a very luminous orange base layer being worn there by the Spanish number 30, Luis Pacheco. I'd like to see the leggings that colour as well. That'd be something. So some discussion about where the disc should be. The pick was comfortably before the previous throw, but of course, if the players decide it didn't affect, it can stay here. Romano checks in. The crane breaks the mark around to Demaray, wanted the quick dish off, and will belatedly just take the little pop there. 
Two players in a similar space in the backfield. So Yonkid clears down line, gets the inside break. Toby De Crane chases down Demare on the end zone line. Will he find the force in? He's looking for it and just puts some air underneath it. And it is knocked away. Second time of asking. Brilliant dump defense there. You cannot do it any better than Sergio Diaz did it there. I think Belgium got a little bit lackadaisical there. It's Everyone fine. wanted to score, it looked like. And there was not really enough support back for Demare. Brilliant defense for Spain, though. A chance to break to begin the second half, then. It's a high stall. Romano thinks he might as well take his chances. And Toby De Crane denies him. But even if he hadn't, I'm not sure that Ramos would have got there. De Crane just trying to zip one downfield. De Barre hustles it down. Looking at the end zone again. And he'll just lead De Crane in for the Belgian hold. It wasn't clean. Their O-line gave it up for the first time. But they locked it down, got it back, and struck it the second time of asking. Well... As we were saying, on that turnover, it looked like Belgium were just a little bit too relaxed outside the end zone. We see another shot of that turnover. Demare did not have much to work with. His teammates just a little bit... What's the word? A little bit uninspired. I think they just thought they'd score immediately. And Spain's defense was phenomenal on, on the end zone line. A real test of mental strength there to make the disciplined red zone stand. And then just a little, just lead into the end zone there from Demare to De Crane as you can see it from the Eurodisc best perspective drug. Yeah. It's a 9-4 Belgium lead with the winner playing Germany or the Czech Republic. That one has gone into half on serve. 8-7 Germany leading. In the other half of the bracket, Great Britain 10-6 up on Switzerland, while on our other streaming field, Italy with an 8-5 half-time lead on France. Mm -hmm. So if you want a bit of split screen action, you know what to do. Put them on mute and have us in full. Of course. And Italy gonna be receiving out of half as well. It's a stone cold drop. That is the last thing that Spain needed. Hockey just tries to jink his way free. Demare coming over to play defense as he is often want to do, Vandenbroek. To Demare. Goes for the offhand into the end zone. Dimes Maker again on the scoreboard, his second goal of the game. And that break train is chugging along once more, 10-4. Well, Demare is actually on the D-line. It's just if he wants to play. He's also on the O-line. If he if he and wants to play, <laughs> if he wants to play offense, he is. No one's going to say no. Uh, he could basically play as much as he wants, which is a lot, it turns out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't, if you missed uh, Dan and Toby on Eurodisc's Limerick Late Night Live from 55 last night, you can go and rewatch that back on our YouTube channel, and we do have some. Uh, bit more of an in-depth dive with Belgium coming up on the YouTube as well so stay tuned for that they were see excellent guests mm -hmm. so. they were indeed as you see coach Pierre Alain de la Mine giving instructions to his charges of course played with much of this squad with moon catches and uh, stepping back into a coaching role just to kind of give that extra oversight and impart that game knowledge that sometimes you can kind of only see from the sideline. There's a replay of that one is an unfortunate drop from Monterde. This ball is gonna hang. It might land, it does indeed. I wasn't sure if it was gonna drift out of the sideline, but it stays in bounds. Sergio Diaz into the backfield. Vandoros didn't get him in a position to bid. And now Spain will try and get rhythm going offensively. Didn't like the spacing though. Miguel Jimenez. Oh, 
across the long levers of Arthur Fuse. Oh, the inside shot to no one. I'm not sure what Miguel Jimenez Perez was looking at, but I don't think any of his teammates knew either. Well, there was space on that side for him to cut into, but none of them were ready to go for it. Interestingly, Belgium choosing not to surround Spain's vertical stack on that point. Belgium looking to the dump space for the first pass and the second requires a layout that is made by Arnold van der Rost. Deep shot coming from Lander de Klein. I think it's going to hang up a little bit. Defender got too far underneath it. Fuse brings it down. And Belgium break again in the hands of the only flying penguin on Belgium's roster, Benjamin Zwartz. Well, Spain just do not have an answer for that kind of offense from the Belgians. Swartz, by the way, is actually the co-president of the Belgian National Federation. Here we are, there's the rip from Lander de Crane. We know that he likes doing it and agonizing for Diaz that he can only watch it sail over his head and then just lays that one out on a plate. And Swartz greedily gobbles it in for 11-4 and with a 3-0 run to start this second half for the Belgians we get another time out here on the field from the open quarter final at EUC. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. 11 4 Belgium lead, sending down an ominous marker to their gold medal rivals here in this quarterfinal against slightly shell-shocked Spain, I think. They, you know, have done phenomenally to make it to this game. I think they've showed that they are more than just a beach country, but Belgium made it very keen that they were going to make Spain adapt to what they wanted to do. And Spain have struggled as that ball sneaks through the metal barriers behind the pitch. And I'm not sure whether it came down in time. Uh, break was signalled, so a bit too much on that pull. Sure. One Troiano will begin the slow walk. Some corgi cam in the background. Triano just taking his time as the slightly swashbuckling, piratical looking Nicholas Hockey with that blonde tash and sparkling earrings gets on the mark. And Troiano sees a violation. Back in play. Troiano with the stall, getting high, wants to put it deep. Itamendi had the bead on it. On the end zone line. Can Spain sneak it through? They're going to take the time out. Well, Spain under incredible amounts of pressure from this Belgian defence. Uh, I don't think they have the time out. 
It should. All there was a stoppage. It wasn't a timeout, as I thought, and it was just a foul on the bar. But it looked like he made the timeout symbol to me. It looks suspiciously like he made the timeout symbol. Mashi comes through. Now they're going to reset it through the handler's base. Again, trying to utilize that quick disc movement to their advantage. Troiano gives it back up the line. Dilmao to the front of the end zone. Ruben San Jose catches the score. First of the second half for Spain, it was 4-7 at one point, and it's since been a 4-0 run that the, Spains have fi the Spaniards have finally snapped. Yeah, this is much more like it from Spain. They were struggling a bit at the start of this point. A bit of a bailout deep shot, but well collected by Itamendi. And then after that, after the timeout, not timeout, they really got moving. And once they're moving, it's difficult for anyone to stop them. And it's so often the case when players are moving the disc around quickly in small spaces, the front of the end zone and standing still there seems to always be open. So the winner of this game playing the winner of Germany and the Czech Republic on serving that one Germany up 9-8. Switzerland coming back a little bit in the second half, but they still trail GB 11-7 on the other half of the bracket where the winner plays France and Italy. And this one, France 6, Italy 9. France, who made a real impact at Windmill in reaching the final there, might not even medal unless they can find something late on there. Van der Wege just decides that, nope, we're going to take things slow and bring it to the front of the end zone. Probably the right choice. They didn't really look ready to feel the pull in their own end zone like that. But letting it roll at the back is a valid option. Begins with a bake to De Crane. Fakes the, dimp, the deep look, but I'm not sure he was ever really going to throw it. One van der Weger spreads it out to the other. Then Jonkers comes into the backfield and now takes up line. He gets the throw. De Crane's gone. And Jonkers fakes it. Big one's underneath. Over the top. Oh, it is tipped. Brilliantly, just sitting in the lane, a second D. Second time the Belgian O-line has turned it, and both of them have been through blocks by Sergio Diaz. Last time they had it, they couldn't convert it. Yeah, Belgium looking. Just a little bit lackadaisical on offense once again. That option was, it was definitely on, but the throw needed to be much, much better. Some discussion about contact on the mark. The disc is going to be checked in, and we're back in play. Romano on the end zone line. Spain desperately craving the break here, but they can't punch it in there. They're going to have to go outside. Young oh. dishing off backwards, and it's going to flow. And oh, did he land in bounds? That is the question. The disc movement before this point was excellent. Players are coming over to have a look at the replay screen. It's a It's a question about what part of his body landed first. So we're going to get another look at it. 
in super slow motion. I think we can just about see it through the crowd of bodies. This is where you clear the line, people. There's the catch, the first point of contact. They're calling the goal. So the disc they're saying he had was in his possession and was the first thing that landed. Now we can look at it again from the high angle. The result is going to be the first Spanish break of the game. Yeah, make your minds up in chat. I'm sure you won't be shy of letting your opinion fell. Again, another good reason not to finish us. Yeah, that looks into me. There is exactly one frame where the right hand is on the ground before the left. OTTV wins again. So Belgium now with their first time to have to send the O-line back out after being broken. And Ben Yonkers will begin from the brick mark. Trying to operate out of the side stack. Beekman just charges through the defender. Stop start at times in the second half. There's the deep shot looking for De Crane. I think he might run out of room here. Oh my word. That is pinpoint right at the back cone. You cannot find a tighter window to fit that into. 12 6. I mean, it, it looked very comfortable for De Crane, but as you say, right in that back corner. Ridiculous throw. No margin for error. His last step before he ran out of bounds and he catches it. Well, in a way, it's good field awareness there from De Crane because he knew that I don't have to go and tow this in extravagantly. I can chase this down and I can just about keep myself in bounds. There's Russ, the Corgi, on the sideline. There's Ooh. another Corgi in attendance, by the way. Ooh. I know. We're spoiled. Very much corgis. my kind of dog. Good boy. Uh, because, like me, it is kind of short, round, <laughs> and funny to look at. Spanish O-line going back out. Although there is a lot of carryover between the two. Deep shot comes up, it's gonna hang. Fuse gets a huge slap on it away. Rose higher than Juan Pasco. But I think, had Fuse not got a hand on it, not sure Pasco would have got there anyway, but it's nice to get that emphatic rejection and get that block up on your stat sheet. Derrick charges through underneath. Van der Rose doesn't like it. Derrick comes through again. You already see him put a bit of air underneath one. This time he wants the reset instead. 
fake. Landon de Crane, we know he's got a cannon and he's never shy of using it, but that one misfires. A bit low. Spain will go again, playing a little bit quickly after the turn, not letting Belgian defenders get into position, but now they're able to adjust and adapt. Off balance, leaning backwards as Mashi threw it. And now Troiano. Marquez. The vet comes underneath. No, goat clears out. Spain look to move around the back. Utilising the barbecue backhand for the give go. And that final scoring shot to Itamendi was too low to be snagged. Just rushed the throw a bit. Spain looking so good up to that point. Lots of fantastic give goes. Catching the disc, changing direction quickly, accelerating back out of the pass. Keeping Belgian defenders behind them, but not able to convert the goal. That one's going to flow. De Crane couldn't get it in the first or the second time as Juan Pasco gets his revenge. What a throw! That is over the top. That man is dealing, Troiano. A beautiful blade to Juan Pasco, who collects his bookends, 7 to 12. Love, love that loop. Yeah, nice to see Spain throwing up some expansive shots as well. Something we're more used to seeing from the Belgians. Visionary throw. Pasco's in so much space. So this open quarter-final, the winner plays Germany and the Czech Republic, and Germany still one ahead there, 10-9. The other side of the bracket, Great Britain leads Switzerland, 12-8. In this game. Low, and in rhythm, Duela takes the shot. To beat the and the Moulinair for years, the best deep threat in Europe, and affected badly during the pandemic. I think people forgot what a weapon he was, but he has proved it in this game. I think that's four goals for him now. Perfectly executed pull play from Belgium. I mean, that was literally just how they drew it up. One pass underneath, bang it in stride to PJ. What more can you ask for? Inside Zach doing its job. PJ's name so long that it doesn't fit in the box. But believe me, everyone here knows who he is. It might fit if we just put PJ rather than his full first name. But That's a fair point. Fits in that box. That's the important thing there. Third goal of the game for PJ. Belgium two away from the semis. But Spain are still alive. Their hopes hanging by only a few threads. But while they still have them, they will look to make the most. Now this looks like the Spain we saw for much of this tournament. Moving the disc quickly, changing angles of attack, keeping defenders constantly orbiting downfield, just dishing off, giving and going. Belgium have generally done a very good job of not letting Spain get into this flow. It's Amendi comes through. Dish back to Dalmau. Just quickly moving it out, still count. Scarcely getting above a few seconds. It's Amendi that time didn't like the dish off. And goes back to Troiano. Who immediately gets rid of it again. I mean, that's what it's all about when it's working for Spain. Oh, cheeky one through there. Punishing the poach. Good recognition, oh. tossing that one up. Trying to get someone to attack the cone. Bit of flare in the fake, and then the blade to the oh. back. Itamendi really reels that one in, gets underneath it and just curls it back into his body. Eight to 13. Belgium now on offense to bring them within one of victory. When Spain are playing well, it's a joy to watch. Isn't it just? So, so good. 
They've been a little bit outmatched at points in this game. But when it clicks, it is so sumptuous. Alvaro Monterde dribbling like crazy at the start of that point, moving Belgian defenders all over the place, giving and going. And then they finish it off by drawing the Belgian defenders into that near corner and then going over the top. And it's Mendy with it. Slightly trickier catch than I think he was hoping for, but makes it work. And it's fantastic to see that the, this Spanish playstyle working against one of the best teams in Europe. I mean, that's the thing is that when, when they get it going and it's clicking, it can trouble even the very best sides here. There's a reason they're in the semi-finals. Heck, there's a reason they beat Italy, who are 11-7 up on France in our other stream set, in our other stream quarter. But Belgium generally have found a way to get that shut down. More zone from Spain. Scuba over the top. All these Belgian players very comfortable throwing those. Wonder if Arthur van der Wey will give it another go. No, not this time. Just goes offhand to the way there. I like going zone here from Spain because after the pool play was so effective last time, it makes sense getting into a different setup just to disrupt anything they might have drawn up. Travel called there mm. on Arthur van der Wey. I think he quickly agreed. Yeah, he took an extra step. And there was some drag on the pivot foot there as well. De Whaler shooting the blade over the top. PJ with the hop step and a jump into the end zone. Match zone. Belgium don't care. They'll find a way. That's the first time we've seen them play really expansively over the zone though. They Generally, you're right, yeah, it has been a bit more piecemeal, I think. They were holstering those shots in, in the first half and the start of the second half, but that's more like the zone offence that I was expecting to see from Belgium. Let's see if this jump in was legit, though. Oh, there's the travel, yeah. You can see he was trying to give that disc immediately to Ukraine, but Holt stops and then, as is so often the case, and do travel after pulling up on give-go players. Okay, was this jump into the end zone legit? I'm not convinced that that left foot had left the ground. It's not the clearest jump in I've ever seen. Generally, actually, when you view these in slow motion, they <laughs> you find more in knotting than you think. Love seeing that from the Eurodisc best perspective drawing angle, so you can really see that offensive spacing and how Belgium just found those pockets and exploited them ruthlessly. A good spirit from Spain to not question that. So Spain will look for that quick offence again. Lovely dish through to Troyano. They've got the one-on-one -on -one downfield of Itamendi. A layout underneath though ensures the possession continues from Pasco. Dama. Past the bidding Dorik. Picks himself up back to his feet. And Marquez offloads. Looking for the backhand down the sideline. Oh, it's a floater. And the interception gives Belgium a chance to kill the game here. Break back hand around. Fuse. To Dirik. Punches it into his chest. That mark of Marquez a little bit close. Dirik calls it. And now here's Heymans. With the leading pass, that was a little bit greedy. And Troyano was not having any of it. And his hand was firmly in the cookie jar and yoinks the cookie out, no problem. Prime, officially Lou Burgess endorsed. You heard it there, as that is a crime of itself. What a block from Zwartz. They do have timeouts if they want to use them. Derek doesn't want to use them. He wants to end it in style towards the end zone. And the toe tap. That is how you finish it.
Belgium are in the semi-finals with a 15-8 victory. And what a way to end, ending in style, banging the disc almost the full length of the pitch. The Belgians were the better team all game long. Some moments of brilliance from Spain, but the depth and talent of this Belgian roster is impressive. They will be a force to be reckoned with for the remainder of this bracket. Uh, I wouldn't mind to ask, three blocks. So have a look here. Belgium just throwing themselves around, even though 14-8, the semi-final berth, is nearly assured. But until it was done, the job was not finished. Swartz with a sick catch block there. And while the sideline was saying, chill it out, take the time out. Jet sets Emil Derrick had other ideas and bangs it on a rope to Arthur Fuse. And that is game. What a way for Belgium to advance. There's no force, there's separation deep, and the throw down the sideline could scarcely be executed any better. So, so good. A bit of a toe tap at the end was all that was needed. Lou is gonna step off the cans temporarily. It's coming into the booth, delighted to say we are joined now by Benjamin Zwartz. Congratulations. Thank you. How are you feeling? Great. Uh, actually, it's amazing to have like a just amazing to have like a small advance in, in the beginning, but quite early in the in the game. So yeah, it uh, it took out a part of the stress that we could maybe have. But it's quite, it was great. Obviously, Spain are known for their quick disc movement, and we saw that at points during the game. But generally, you did a really good job of just throttling it and slowing them down. Yeah, actually, PA uh, coached us uh, really well yesterday about it uh, yeah thanks to his analysis uh, we, we we succeeded I think uh, to to stop them we knew that they were going to yeah to play to play so quickly and it was gonna gonna be uh, really hard to stop them and so yeah actually we are quite happy on a personal perspective three blocks for you what do you think allowed you to to be in a position to make those plays <coughs> I think the whole team were so hyped uh, uh, by everyone, every every player of the team. We supported each other, and we were like so so hyped uh, by each other that it was amazing. And we felt like we can do it. We have to fight for every point, even if we have like a, a small advance in the beginning. But the whole game, I mean, we have to fight for each point, and we have to f to give it all. I mean, we until saw it at the end, end there that catch block, even though you know you had that that you know quite large scoring margin in your favor I think kind of uh, embodies that attitude you're talking about where until that final points in the job's not done yeah what does the evening look like for you ahead of your semi-final <coughs> and potentially a final tomorrow definitely a rest a lot of rest um, we're looking really looking forward to uh, to play the semi-final uh, but yeah definitely a rest and an analysis analysis <laughs> sounds like a uh, a fun evening ahead, but uh, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's part of that's part of the process that you you know you come to enjoy, and hopefully, we you know you can see the fruits of that put it, put out there with a team that I think kind of has become a bit of a fan favourite. What kind of do you think endears you to uh, people watching at home? Um, sorry, can you repeat? Like, In other words, <laughs> why do you think people enjoy watching Belgium so much? Um, yeah, I guess we have like a lot of different talents that put quite a show. Uh, yes, especially with the moon catchers, with uh, at world, and yeah, we have like some talents that do crazy diving these and that kind of stuff. So when you see a lot of different highlights and and also different throws, uh, original throws, um, yeah, it makes like yeah people enjoying the, to watch these kind of games. I think. Lovely. We'll let you get back to uh, your team to yeah. take part in the Spirit Circle and celebrate. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate you giving up your time. And thank you very much for accommodating and everything for the stream and that kind of stuff. Oh, we thank love you. it. We love it. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you giving up your time.
it's so nice to be able to hear from the players post game and get that little bit of extra insight there as Swartz just jogs into the spirit circle there. Lou, for Spain, their slight fairy tale run is over, but they've still had a brilliant tournament as we look at the match stats powered by force. The Belgian airline only turned it over twice and generated 14 of their own break chances and hit on half of them. That's going to hold you in good stead. Right, absolutely. Of course, Spain, realistically, quarters was the ceiling for them at this tournament. I don't think they realistically have the talent to take down any of the top contenders in this division, but excellent showing for them. A lot to be proud of. I mean, they proved that they belong uh, in the quarterfinals here, and they are not just a beach country. They can mm. damn well do it on the grass as well. Belgium, you heard what Zwarz was saying. Now the mindset flips. We prepare, we analyse, and we get ready for that semi-final and potentially the final tomorrow. Can't wait. Neither can I. And you can watch it, of course, live here on Ulti TV, where we bring you both semi-finals from each division and, of course, the finals tomorrow afternoon into the evening as to who we might see there. Well, Germany 12-8 up on the Czech Republic, so looking like Belgium will face Germany tomorrow. That could be a powerhouse encounter. Great Britain 15 Switzerland 8 is a final score and they will play the winner of France and Italy and you can go and watch the end of that quarter final now over on our other streaming field Italy in a 13-8 lead but still a bit more to come here on Ulti TV double women's quarter final action Italy versus Switzerland and France versus Great Britain in just over half an hour and we have the EUF diversity showcase the EUF and Ulti TV are very proud to be involved in bringing you at seven o'clock local time this evening for all of our ulti tv crew and lou burgess alongside me benji reese we'll see you on the other side Everybody dance, don't stop I just need a minute to find out What I'm feeling cause I'm about to go nuts And my team is trying to say it was up I'll be waiting for this my whole life Wanna do it again three, four times Cause it's better than a dream highway with you and me I will never get enough So I what a nice surprise You're all
can go all night I will show you how to run the red light If you wanna, you can call me mine Thank you. Yeah, ultimate.